say that when we started out with an idea with Tales from the Tavern, we had a very clear picture of traveling troubadours, of people who gathered so many stories along the way, who write songs as naturally as most of us breathe. And um, I think if you were to look in that manual and see what Tales from the Tavern, you know, obviously it keeps evolving, it keeps changing, it keeps, but the root of it, if you look in there right there, you see this guy right here, and we're very, very welcome to, to welcome back to this stage. We're humbled and honored to be associated, our friend Peter Case. Hey, back at you, man. Thanks a lot, Ron. Wow, that's cool, man. All right, well, that's something right there. Turn it up out there, Kai. Show. Made the border at dawn and kept going The moon crossed my path, I was doing the math Well, I'll make it, there's no way of knowing I should have called home before she went to sleep Now I pray the Lord for her soul to keep Tomorrow we will find us when turned in the sheep The world turns every 24 hours See them, but just for an instant. The wind all the morning off like a train, and the skyline was lost in the distance. The skyline was lost in the distance. Who moved the furniture? Who hit the light? Everything's changing, and nothing feels right. I thought I was smart. That was last night. The world turns every 24 hours. Turns up 
turns every 24 hours you know it's true folks you know i used to do like 100 shows a year like when i my album when i first came out you know as a solo i was doing like you know 300 dates and then i did that for a little while for a while but then somewhere in there i rebelled against that uh, and then i had kids my wife had kids my ex-wife and we had children and I was still going on the road, you know, but I, you know, was also like really involved with uh, that family. And so, uh, um, and I, you know, I still am really involved with my kids, but when they were little, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you, and so, uh, you know, I didn't hit the road like 300 days a year. I, I might be out 100 total, you know, and that was still a lot, you know, or 80 or something. I don't know, it's hard to say, you know, if you can get the gigs, you want to go because you can make money. but. On the other hand, I, I, I don't know, I, I've got other things I like to do, you know, so um, I like to uh, play piano and compose and uh, write. I'm working on a book or two and, uh, you know, I mean, I love to play and I love doing new things. But I, if, you're, if I'm on the road 300 days a year at this point, like I feel like it's taken away from uh, like writing, songwriting and stuff. So, you know, I, I like to be able to have something fresh that I could bring to people, you know. Well, if you have any questions during the show, just write them on a slip of paper and pass them up to the front. And I'll try to answer them at my next trip to Tales of the Tavern. <laughs> but I got one right here, and I really want to thank some people here that really helped me out, associated with Tales of the Tavern and Ron Cologne, and that's the Artist Advocacy Foundation. And they help our artists that are in tight spots, and man, I really appreciate people like them doing the work they're doing, and they really help out a lot. So let's give them a big hand. The Artist Advocacy Foundation, right here, Ron Cologne. Thank you very much. All right. Well, I started writing songs back in 1965. My first song was for the girl next door. Her name was Barbie. And I wrote a song called Stay Away From Me, I'm No Good For You. <laughs> and you know, folks, I haven't seen her for 50 years. I think it worked. <laughs> but I did go back to that town. I did play a gig back in my hometown with my friend Gurf Morlux. We played a gig back at the old movie theater where we used to go see movies. And me and Gurf, who also grew up in that town, right off Highway 62 in the little town of Hamburg, New York. And we played at the Hamburg Palace Theater. And uh, I said, you know, I wrote my first song here. The place was packed with people, and they'd actually open up a bar in the theater, which they'd never done the whole time I was going there. But uh, now they had a bar there, and everybody's getting kind of like, you know, the place kind of blasting off. And, uh, and I go, uh, well, I wrote this song for Barbie Klein, and uh, I haven't seen her. And they go, she's here! <laughs> Somebody got in the audience yelled at that. Be careful what you want. You just want to get it, folks. And, and I wrote a lot of songs. And you, one thing you'll notice in a lot of my songs is there's a, a lot of law enforcement in my songs. I don't know why that is. But right from my very earliest songs, you know, there's love. And there's a, the love of freedom and love of people. And then there's law enforcement. Going to jail is in all my songs. And I was wondering about that, and then I realized that I have gone to jail in every town I've ever lived in. And it's usually a case of mistaken identity. It's, I don't know, it keeps happening. But, uh, for example, I was driving down the road with this guy, Jeffrey Lee Pierce, man, down in L.A., and uh, I was on my way. We were going to the liquor store, and we were trying to write songs. He had a band called The Gun Club, and so we were... We were driving up there trying to get some more alcohol at night, and I turned my car to the right on Sunset Boulevard against a red light, and you're allowed to do that in California, right? Yeah. Well, the highway patrol apparently didn't know that. They pull it. <laughs> the guy yells over the last bear, pull it there over. So I pull over, and he goes, not there. And I pull on farther down the road. <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> I'm already behind in the count, man. Yeah. I already got two strikes, and uh, man, man, oh man, Jeffrey, man, I just got, you know, I just come back from tour with the Plimsolls, I've been out on the road for a long time, and I'd forgotten that I had a bunch of traffic tickets out on the car, and I'd forgotten that they'd gone to warrant, and I'd also forgotten that the car wasn't registered, and 
I also forgot that my license had uh, expired while I was gone. That's how it was back in the Plimsolls days, you know. Music was the most important thing. The only important thing. And so the cop pulls us over and he comes walking up the car and he goes, what did you think you were doing back there? And I had nothing to say to that. And he goes, uh, let me see the registration on your ID and the registration on this vehicle. And I started doing one of those kind of like things you do when you know you don't have what you need, but you're looking for it anyhow. And I'm doing this whole thing. So, you know, maybe it's over here somewhere, you know, the registration. And Jeffrey, man, he just opens up the glove compartment and all these tickets come fluttering out. <laughs> and they're going down on the ground. The cop shines his flashlight over there. He shines it up on Jeffrey and he goes, what's your name? He goes, Jeffrey Pierce. The cop goes, Jeffrey Lee Pierce? Yes, sir. He goes, are you in the gun club? He goes, yes, sir. Cop goes, well, I saw you guys a couple weeks ago at the music machine. You're pretty good. See if you can get your friend here to get his act together, man. <laughs> so we had to switch out, and he was allowed to drive, and he drove us home. That cop walked away, though. We were both just sitting there like we'd seen a ghost. Like, <laughs> wow, man. So then, you know, I went home and, you know, had a good time with Jeffrey and we forgot all about it. And then I get up the next day, holy crap, man, X is playing over at UCLA, man. I got to get over to that X show. So I was with my friend Bannister and, his, and a girl that we, we hung out with, Judy, man, jumping Judy. And we all get in the car and we're riding across town. And uh, I'd forgotten all about everything. And here come the police, man. And uh, oh, man, I forgot about that whole situation last night with the police. He pulls me over, and this time they don't say anything. They just get me out of, get out of the car. Put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. That was it. And they throw me in the back of the car, and uh, you know that was it. And uh, I'm driving around. It's Friday night. I'm driving around in the car with the police. They won't talk to me. And they're just take, taking their long time to get to the police station. Judy and uh, Bannister went to the show. You know, they drove off in my car. You know, and. Uh, Oh, and now I'm down. And then finally they get me down to the police station, man. They get us down to the police station, man. And, uh, they, you know, they got me handcuffed behind my back, and then they handcuffed me to the bench. You fought, you've all been through this, right? So, they, so they, ha they got me handcuffed to the bench, man. And then, like, I'm just sitting there, like, kind of like, you know, kind of feeling a little bit of anxiety or something. And this cop comes up to me, and he goes, he walks by, and he does a double take. He goes back, he goes, go ahead and call me a pig. I didn't, you know. Didn't want to get into that. And then they bring this girl in, man, and she's crying, man. Like, oh, God, you know, I've never been arrested. Like a young girl, you know, a young lady, you know. Never been arrested before. So, oh, I can't believe it, you know. Uh, they go, shut up. You know. they, they go, sit down on that bench over there. So she sits down next to me on the bench. She's like, oh, God. She goes, did she used to be in the plimsolls? <laughs> So that was that time. I got in some more trouble in Beverly Hills. I'm gonna play a lot of music this set. You know, I won't keep talking about it. I'm not gonna say another word after I tell you this next story. So I'm in Beverly Hills, right? And uh, I got picked up on something I had nothing to do with. I swear, I did. Complete case of mistaken identity. Wrong place at the wrong time and all that kind of stuff. And. Uh, so they took me in, and then I'm in there, and then like the cop comes out of the room, the detective comes out, and he goes, you can go. He goes, somebody told the truth. <laughs> if you're a songwriter, you just hear these things, and like, and, and like, you know, I think like, like when somebody, like you're just waiting for the next song to show up, and that's what happens, you know, you don't really just make up things, but people say things, and you go, ding. And when that cop said that, I go, I got a song, and I went right out to my car, and I had the whole song by the time I got home except for um, the chorus wasn't right, because every time you would get to the chorus, it would just go, somebody told the truth. And that was kind of boring. So the song goes like this, and I'll show you, there's a part for everybody to sing. Will you guys sing one with me? It'll be better than just sitting there listening to me, yeah, okay. So we're gonna sing, and so here's how it goes. It's in the key of uh, this. And then it's got a beat. And so what I did was I took the, somebody told the truth, and I broke it into pieces, and, did it in different orders, like an old, it's an old songwriting thing where you, you kind of turn it into a nursery rhyme. <coughs> so it goes like this. <clears throat> Somebody 
Somebody told. They told the truth to somebody. Somebody told the truth. See, well, that's got a little bit more than just going. Somebody told the truth, right? So, like, so the, it's like you sing one word, somebody, and then you sing two words, somebody told, and then you sing five words. They told the truth to somebody, and then you circle back around. And you do the title. Somebody told the truth to somebody. Somebody. Let me do the right fingers there. Somebody. Somebody told, they told the truth to somebody, somebody told the truth to somebody, somebody told, they told the truth to somebody, somebody told the truth. Now you see how quietly we're singing that like there? That's how you do it when you're in a, a, a hotel or a motel or you're at the Royal Crown Hotel, the Royal Crown Copenhagen Hotel. If I was going to sing this over there, I'd go, somebody, somebody told. They told the truth to somebody, somebody. But what we're going to do here is we're going to clap. Come on, give me that. Mm. Somebody, somebody told me. They told the truth to somebody, somebody. They told the truth to somebody. We got it. Yeah, you got it, man. It sounds really good. All right. Well, the courthouse emptied out the jail as I went home. The lawyers is the gilly hearts. The cops are on their own. The soldiers left the camps. Weapons lay in heaps. Seven fifteen prisoners were freed. Cause somebody, somebody. They told the truth to somebody. Somebody told the truth to somebody. Yeah, somebody told. They told the truth to somebody. Somebody told the truth. That's right. Somebody told the truth to some. Yes! They told the truth to somebody. Somebody told the truth. Gonna clap now. All right. They got to fail. The children of the highway were high up on the hill. The politicians vanished. Must have caught a plane. The clandestine policemen were left out in the rain. I sat down on the curbstone. I rubbed my eyes and cough. I rubbed my wrist and ankles and I thank the Lord above that somebody, somebody, they told the truth to somebody. Somebody told the truth to some. Yeah, somebody told, they told the truth to somebody, somebody told the truth. <laughs> I think we're about ready to try that one. Go for another take on that. Good work, you guys. You got it. Hey, man, it took the plimsolls a lot longer than that to learn a song. All the other money that used to come to songwriters and stuff, it doesn't, it doesn't come anymore. You know, so. Because of? A uh, lot of reasons. But I would say one of them is streaming. Um, the big streaming people don't pay right. particularly well, and like so, they pay like a pittance compared to what used to go to the songwriters. So now, um, you don't you don't get jack, man. For um, you know, if you had like a trillion listens, you could buy a used car. You know, <laughs> get your wife a used coat somewhere. I mean, it's it's pathetic, man. Yeah, it's legal crime, really, because they've just robbed um, the. 
you know, the last guy they thought of, you know, was the songwriter, you know. The music's fun, it's beautiful, it's a kick, you know. Once you get used to the idea that, like, you know, you're going to be screwed forever, you know, you're fine after that, you know. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, once you get used to it, you really do get used to it. To be an artist means that um, you yeah. don't really make money. The number of the songs I'm playing tonight are from this one called Let Us Now Praise Sleepy John. Well, it's cold outside, Lord, help those lost tonight with the freezing toes. In the park with the rain-drenched clothes, she's all the way down. The sky is clear, the stars are bright, the temperature's gonna fall tonight. In the park looking for a light, she's in a hospital gown. Underneath the stars, city by the sea, headlights of the cars shine but no one sees. It's another world Just five feet away Look into her eyes God bless is all she said Some drink wine, some are smoking crack This lady all along wants none of that In the park with a cotton sack Afraid she's gonna drown A choice she made not long ago Has led to this, how could she know The door slams shut and her children go To whatever life they found Underneath the stars, city by the sea Headlights of the cars, shine but no one sees It's another world, just five feet away Look into her eyes, God bless is all she'll say So now the clergy have their doubts Are they helping lazy layabouts? Late at night the drunken louts terrorize the town the cops are young, they're just kids They don't know about the skids They just do what the gentry bids From the other end of town Ah, underneath the stars City by the sea Headlights of the cops Shine but no one sees It's another world It's just five feet away Look into her eyes God bless is all she'll say Sleep in the park, rain or shine, a thousand crows on a telephone line. Ask her how and she'll say fine, she's all the way down. Do drop shot like cannonballs, crash through paper, prison walls. Her heart stops beating and her breathing stalls, she's dying all along. Underneath the stars, city by the sea, headlights of the cars, shine but no one sees. It's another world, just five feet away, look into her eyes, God bless is all she'll say. So now you ask, what can I do, seeing no, they're just like you. You could wind up in the blue or beneath the pauper's crown. Don't be afraid, you'll be surprised when you look into her eyes. You find a soulful feeling rise, you're all the way down. Oh, underneath the stars, city by the sea, headlights of the cars shine, but no one sees. It's another world, just by the way, look into her eyes. God blesses all she see. Got a hot tip on a horse in the seventh race at Hollywood Park. To make a long story short, I bet everything I had on that race, which was only about $50. And if the horse wouldn't have fallen down coming out of the gate. <laughs> all right. True story. All right. One 
summer day in San Joaquin we hit the county fair I played my show it was time to go but something helped me there so we went out to the racetrack charmbine inside till I bet everything I had on a seventh race and watch that damn horse trip now if I go crazy I will lose my Just one more time Drop me one more time Drop me one more time So here's what happened She rode in on a milk white mule Through the trumpets and the cavaliers Alive to the bright adventure of the streets And chased my fears Now I can talk to anyone Know what's in their heart Go anywhere Downtown stage, looking like she's half asleep. The president's on his telephone, he's knocked out on his feet. But I have got the superpowers, everybody does. Whoever helps somebody out and done it just because. Who never answered later when asked to lend a hand? Who never turns their eyes away when asked to understand? But if I go crazy, I will lose my. Let's take it out now. Yeah. Drop it one more time. Drop it one more time. When I got to LA, like the first thing I wanted to look at, when I went there in 73, and I only wanted to see two things. I came down from San Francisco, I was on my way to Mexico, and I got, I got to see two things. I want to see 77 Sunset Strip, <laughs> which does, wasn't there. <laughs> and I want to see Phil Spector's productions on Sunset. And so we went over there, and that was there. Wow. And like, wow. Because I was super into Phil Spector. I was like, he's one of the greats, you know. And then, uh, strangely enough, I had two record deals eventually in, after many years. Uh, I had two major label deals in LA and they were both out of the same office. Oh, we're Geffen? Phil Spector's office. That, was that so where the For Geffen some reason, I'm was? like, I gotta go to Phil Spector's office and I would look at it. And then I get my first record deal, it's Richard Perry and he's in Spector's office. And then he moves out and then David Geffen moves in and he's, I go up there and it's the same so fucking what, office. I've been there wow. before, you know? Wow. It's really weird, man. Wow. But that's, you know. Tell, tell, explain what was so um, radical about um, Phil Spector's productions. Well, I mean, those records were really big when I was a kid. And I think in many ways, Phil Spector was more influential on music than the Beatles, in terms of bands, because that big, a lot of the big sounds that you hear, even up through heavy metal, and up through uh, the Ramones, and up through punk rock, up through metal, up through a lot of different rock and roll, is based on the um, orchestration of very simple things to be done in a huge way. And that's what Spectre did. Like, instead of somebody just going it just would go boom, 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 boom. Yeah. It'd be like huge, and he'd have like 10 guys like playing in the backbeat, and three pianos, and he created this whole rock and roll kind of, um, hugeness that was very beautiful though. Wallace and then he, and then it also had like a, these really beautiful, yeah, the Wallace sound. And I think that that was super influential on all the different bands. 
Um, and even in the 60s, for sure, the Beatles, it's as influential as Bob Dylan. Yeah. Because, like, Bob Dylan, like, just bleeds out into every lyric. You know what I mean? Like, everything that's been written. Well, Phil, Phil Spector bleeds out into every production. Yeah. Because, like, you know, it was just so, you know, you know, and hip hop in a way, really, you know, the, the beat on that, you know. So he created these huge grooves, you know, and uh, it's, I was so sad when, like, he uh, went down like that because uh, he was a big uh, musical hero. Yeah. And he did a great job on uh, George Harrison and John Lennon. Yeah. Great job on those records. Like, yeah. Those are good records, man. That Mother yeah. and uh, that All Things Must Pass, those are beautiful, powerful records. I, I don't know what happened to him, you know, I couldn't say. He seemed like he just uh, probably was out of his mind. Don't mind the night of the rolling sea The weary night never worries me but the hardest time in a sailor's day is to watch the sun as it dies away. And it's one more day on the great funnel line. The finest ship that sails the sea is still a prison for the likes of me. If I had wings like Noah's dove, I'd fly up harbor to the one I love. And it's one more day. On the gray funnel line Lord, if dreams were only real I'd have my hands on that wooden wheel And with all my heart I'd turn around and I tell the boys we're homeward bound. And it's one more day on the great funnel line. So I'll spend my time like some machine. Until blue waters turn to green Then I'll dance on down that walk ashore And sail the great funnel line no Blind Willie McTell song. I'm gonna wait around here, baby, till your fried pies get done. I wait around here, baby, till your fried pies get done. Cause I think I got a nickel. I wanna buy me one. I wonder, can I find a woman to me like my right of thumb? Wonder, can I find a woman? Like my last ride of dawn She kept it up for her daddy 
Charges like a morning star. My good baby got a bed, it shines like a morning star. And when I crawl to the middle, it rides me like a Cadillac. their eyes while I sing this song. Either you close your eyes or I'll close mine.
thank you. It's real different not singing your own songs, and so you know, I got you get into like those old songs, and you, you know, you're singing them, and it's not really like a, like you know, singing your own songs. You know, you, you know where the, what you think the important part and the line that you're trying to deliver to everybody or something like that. But you, when you're singing like an old song, man, you have no real, uh, you know, there's a lot of weird lines, and you got to like enter the song somehow and like. You know, get your mind around it all. You know, it'll be, some of those old songs are weird, you know. Yeah. And so, but you you love them, but then you're like, why? You know, and then you listen to them, and you, you gotta kind of enter into it, and then like it opens up for you. Yeah. But uh, and so I learned a different thing singing those songs. It was really fun for me to sing, because uh, you got to make things happen when you're doing a gig, you know, or when you're playing music for people. Like you want. You don't you don't make it happen, but you want you know you want people. It's like you know, oh, that was a song and that was enough. You know, that was good. You know, it was, that makes it for us. You know, but um, with those old folk songs, like so, you don't know sometimes. You know, and then you know, I used to feel a long time ago that that, that it was really hard to play those songs, and then now I'm kind of getting my head around it more. All right, Are there any questions so far? <laughs> It's okay to play two A minor songs in a row. Yes. Kind of like the time I saw, I saw Towns Van Zandt. And he came out and he played five A minor songs in a row. The temperature in the room was 110 degrees. And people were falling, like just passing out right in the middle of the show and landing on the floor. He'd be playing on that song in A minor and you'd hear like Broom. It was good though. In fact, that's the inspiration for this song. For Mariaga Chiampas on a train called the Beast. Trusting our lives to the ones from the East. The coyote dropped us, and on the same day, the border guards cut us and they locked us away. We need Water from a star, living water. A six year old child is facing the judge. She can't have a lawyer, they're not gonna budge. They want to deport her, her parents have died. If they send her back now, that'll be on the side. She needs one from a stone. Living water, water from a stone. On streets paved with diamonds and gold. You hold your head tight, but the future's been sold. The temperature's rising way up in the sky. This is it. of your team and sure on your liberty statue the words are so clear have they been erased now the future is here so you're making six figures but you owe that on school and your fiance's teaching so everything's cool but you can't help but see on your way out to eat in a 
another world at the end of your speed You need water, water from a stone Manufacturing sorrow and exporting doom Tomorrow the cancer arrives in your room The rent you collected will stay in its box You'll have more to do than just changing the locks You'll need water, water from a stove So here's a song that I had, like these days, if you have a big song, it, you know, it doesn't, you know, if you want to make a living playing music, you know, heaven forbid, you know, you can't do it just about any way you think about doing it, but um, if you get a big song in a TV show, man, you're doing real good. And so I got a big song in a big show on TV. It was called, and, and when they got, like, you really got it made when you write, like, a, a really heartfelt love song. And they put, yeah, uh, yeah man. And they put it in a big vampire show on TV. Yeah. And that's what happened with this one. The, song, the show is called True Blood. Yeah. Woo. And they used my song, Two Angels, in a scene where two shapeshifters were making love on a pool table. <laughs> Which is weird, because that's exactly what I was thinking about <laughs> when I wrote the song. <laughs> Think about it right now. I'll sing you this song. That must have been two angels. Or was it you and me? That must have been two angels. Or was it you and me? And now those angels are flown. Let us hear our own, how can it be? We fell in love on the night we met. We fell in love, love, the night we met. Came down from above, I can't forget There must have been two angels Or was it you and me? There must have been two angels Or was it you and me? Now those angels have flown Left us here on our own, how can it be?
left us here on our own out can it be now those angels have gone left us here to carry on how can it be that must have been two angels must have been two angels that must have been two angels Thank you. Hey, I'm going to switch to my other guitar and wrap things up here. You know, I like rock and roll and I like folk music, you know. Uh, and I, I like it all, really. You know, I, I really feel like um, that that's a great marriage, you know. Uh, you know, rock and folk. To me, that's always like the great marriage. Okay, here's my, I got a new single. It's available here. It's only available at the gigs. It's almost out. But there, I only had like, there's only like a very small, like a few hundred of them, and they're almost all gone now. And it's on the uh, Need to Know label. And, um, and uh, I recorded an old blues song on this record, and uh, it's in an attractive, uh, uh, Record sleeve painted, uh, designed by a guy named Lamar Sorrento, an outsider artist from down in Memphis. Very popular. They sell his paintings for a lot of money. But, but um, the record itself is a recording of an old blues song written in 1926 by a blues singer, one of the real greats, called Kokomo Arnold. And Kokomo Arnold recorded the song in 26, and then it was followed very quickly in 1927 by Sleepy John Estes, whose song I did here before. Sleepy John Estes recorded it. Uh, and changed a lot of the words in it, and, and, uh, and then in 19, in the 30s, a couple of people did it, but most notably Robert Johnson recorded it, and uh, you know the great Robert Johnson. So um, he recorded the song, and then uh, not that much happened with the song in the 40s. Just everybody's kind of treaded water on that. But then Elvis came out, and Elvis recorded the song as one of his son sessions, and then very quickly Ricky Nelson recorded it. Eddie Cochran recorded it. Gene Vincent recorded it. The Beatles played it in Hamburg, Germany. So shortly afterwards, the Kinks came out with a version of it. And then uh, Bob Dylan recorded it. And uh, then things went on, kind of just holding still with all those people playing it. And then the, by the time it got around, the Plimsolls recorded it. I recorded it. And uh, the Flaming Groovies did a version of it. Everybody did this song. Willie Nelson did a country version of it. Sleep at the Wheel did a... Texas swing version of it, but Bob Wills did the original version of this song down in Texas in the 50s. So it's a weird thing, but I'll tell you the weirdest thing about it is it's not really a very good song. <laughs> so, so I don't know why we're all doing it, but you'll see what I mean in a second. The hat goes, I can't handle it. It's like being in a K or something. I mean, sometimes that's what you want from a hat. But. Turning up the level in the house a little bit, Kai. We need a little bit of rock and roll because I'm going to sing a song called Milk Cow Blues. Yeah. Whoa. Well, if you see that evening song go down. Yeah, man. Well, if you see that evening song go down. Well, that's the time my baby, that's the time my baby comes around. Well, if you see my milk girl, honey, please drive a hoe. Well, if you see my baby drive a hoe. Alright then, Elvis Presley, lay it on your lockers. I'll try my best to get along with you. Now I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. You better stop your crying. Leave me alone. You don't believe I'm leaving. You can count the days I'm gone. I'm gonna live. You're gonna need your love and daddy's help from there. You're gonna be so sorry Are oh, you ever treated me this way You never
dance too. Come on now, baby, yeah. the time my baby then when my baby comes around 